are listening to WMNH 95.3. Welcome, everybody. Here we go. It is Wednesday. Matt Connerton unleashed, and we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in Glorious. And it is a glorious day outside. My God, this weather is nice. Um, Mid 80s. I, I, I like it. It's, you know, it's October, but it doesn't feel like October. It feels more like summer. I prefer summer. <laughs> I'm a summer guy, I'm not a fall guy. Leaves, uh, you know, they're they're nice to look at and everything, the foliage, until they all fall off the trees, and then you got a bunch of dead leaves, and winter's coming, and ugh. So if we can hold on to summer a little bit longer, that's fine with me. Anyway, I digress. It is a glorious day outside in downtown Manchester, New Hampshire, here from the studios of WMNH. Uh, we're also, of course, on Comcast Channel 6 if you're in Manchester, and hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. Uh, You can go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all of your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, By the way, uh, yes, uh, Miriam, uh, (laughs) Miriam Banish is in the Facebook live chat, and she loves uh, Puddles Pity Party. Actually, she uh, she went, uh, Jenny went with her uh, once to see Puddles live in uh, Concord. And um, yeah, that was a a song parody of Royals. Uh, devoted uh, to the ouster of Kevin McCarthy that I just found online, so I thought I'd play that. And of course, I opened the show with uh, Strangers by um, uh, Fox and the Flamingos, uh, who were here last week, and just such an amazing band. And yeah, I've, I've played that song a bunch of times now. That that song, I don't even know if it's available yet on the streaming services. It might be by now. Uh, when we uh, debuted it on the show, it hadn't even been, uh, it wasn't available anywhere yet. We were the first to have it. And I just, I, I, that's one of those songs, you know, that I've, I've got a, there's a, a short list of songs of guests who have been on the show that just get stuck in my head all the time. And that's one of them. I can't get enough of that. Such a great song. What a great band. Fox and the Flamingos. Um, we've had a lot of great musical guests. We do not have a musical guest today. However, uh, what we're doing now with Wednesdays is uh, we are resuming our segment with my favorite conservative, Eric Pilcher, but uh, because uh, scheduling on his end has been a challenge, he's now joining us in the second hour on Wednesdays, a numero dos. So I uh, really look forward to that. So he'll be joining us. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we've been able to do that segment. So he will be joining us today in the second hour and uh, really, uh, really enjoy that. It's a popular feature on the show. And of course, we have Eric Pilcher's classic film reviews on Fridays, and we'll talk about that too. Uh, the Exorcist. It's uh, it's almost time. Yes, yes. Uh, let's see. So that will be coming up today. Uh, if you'd like to join us, the studio line is open. 603-250-6007. 603-250-6007. You can also text me at 617-917-4476. I'm on social media at Matt Connerton. You can email me, Matt, at mattconnerton.com. And of course, you can interact and opine in the Facebook live chat. But the best thing to do so that we can hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is to give us a call at 603-250-6007. Uh, let's say hello to everybody in the Facebook live chat. Uh, Jenny is in there, of course, and says, Shalom, peeps. Uh, Easy G Eric Gagnon joins us and says, Happy Prince Spaghetti Day. Uh, let's see. Uh, Miriam Banish, I mentioned, is in the chat room. Uh, John Ho- oh, John Hopwood has some very exciting news uh, in the chat room. Uh, he says, I have been selected as the new Speaker of the House, according to a text on my phone. Now, I have to tell you, John, that does surprise me. And I don't know if there's a way that you can verify that to make sure. You know, there are a lot of scammers out there. Uh, the other thing that surprises me about that is, you know, you, you're uh, you're not a Republican. Uh, and uh, I wouldn't have thought you would even be on their radar, frankly. I mean, if Matt Gates uh, won't. Uh, can't get along with Kevin McCarthy. I don't know how he's going to get it. But that actually, that would be something, right? I just have an I, I just had a great idea for a reality show uh, where uh, John Hopwood and Matt Gates, Congressman Matt Gates of Florida, are roommates. 
I think that would be uh, fantastic. Uh, you could also make it into a sitcom, but I think reality show would be better, and I think it would be very, uh, very entertaining. I'm not a big reality TV guy, but I would watch that. No, uh, I don't know. Well, congratulations if it's true, John. Uh, that's amazing. You know, um, a lot of people don't know this, but the Speaker of the House does not have to be a sitting member of the House of Representatives. You do not have to be one of our elected lawgivers and overlords, as I like to call them, also known as Congress people. Uh, you do not have to be one of them. You do not have to be an elected member of that body to be Speaker of the House. I don't think in uh, our history uh, we've ever had a Speaker of the House who was not an elected member of the House uh, at that time. I don't think we have. Uh, the idea of it has been floated. In fact, there's some people who think that a uh, certain former president, uh, Donald John Trump, would make a, a great uh, Speaker of the House. Uh, seems to me he's a little busy. He's uh, running for president, and he's got some legal stuff uh, he's dealing with. So I think he might be a little tied up. But uh, but that idea is out there. Uh, B. Pinard uh, joins us in the Facebook live chat and says, Good afternoon. Hello, B. Uh, let's see. Uh Miriam says, is that really John Hopwood or did he get hacked? Yes, because John is also uh, sharing somebody's OnlyFans page in the Facebook live chat. That's really for the other show, uh, John. Of course, Matt Connerton unsheathed. We can explore those matters further. Uh, but uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, Miriam said, okay, now I know it's you, LOL. I'm afraid to click on it. Yeah, me too. Uh, Melanie La Liberty from the great state of Vermont joins us in the Facebook live chat. Uh, John says the uh, OnlyFans member uh, who, for whom he has shared the link in the chat room says, uh, uh, John says she has 42K in student debt. So she's working it out as a working girl online, uh, parallel to the nurse in Virginia running as the Democratic nominee for the House of Reps, except she was doing it for extra loot and fun. Well, uh, Melanie says, I always knew you would be House Speaker one day. Matt owes me $10. I don't remember making that bet. Uh, we need to confirm this, too. Look, I'm a cheap SOB. If you want 10 bucks out of me, we need a, uh, uh, this is what I need. I need a certified letter from somebody official, perhaps Patrick McHenry. McHenry? Uh, yeah, McHenry. I guess he's the... Uh, He's, he's the, the acting speaker now. I'm a little confused about how this works. You know, other than, I mean, it's a circus. Uh, I'm not confused about that part. Uh, I hope they don't start bringing out elephants. Uh, I mean, I mean, literal elephants, not Republicans. Um, because that's, uh, you know, we, we, don't, uh, we don't do that anymore. Remember when Ringling Brothers, they got rid of the elephants? And I think it basically put the circus out of business. But it's just as well because it's, uh, you should not abuse those uh, those amazing creatures. Again, I'm talking about uh, literal elephants. I'm not talking about Republicans. You shouldn't abuse anybody, though. Uh, you should not do anything that violates the Geneva Convention. Uh, well, then again, I mean, Matt Gates might be the exception. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Don't anyone get upset with me. I'm not suggesting Matt Gates should be tortured. Uh, I don't know if Kevin McCarthy himself would necessarily uh, say no to that, but uh, let's see. Um, John Opwood said, uh, wait a minute. The teacher made a salary of 42K, but 8K a month from posting naughty content on OnlyFans. Wow. Her husband is very supportive of her uh, sex work career. I think that's, uh, that's remarkable. Um, Rhonda Favero from the great state of California joins us in the Facebook live chat. Oh, John Hopwood says, I'm talking about the New Hampshire House of Reps. Oh, so you're not, so you haven't been chosen to be the new Speaker of the House. See, I just figured, I guess I shouldn't have assumed. I shouldn't have assumed, but you know why I assumed? Because there happens to be an opening uh, in the, uh, the United States uh, House of Representatives for a Speaker. If you haven't noticed, uh, the job has opened up. I wonder if it's something you can apply for on Indeed. Okay, let's see. JFed uh, joins us in the Facebook live chat. Hello, JFed. Nice to see you in there, sir. 
Uh, Mike from Queen City Cabinetry joins us in the Facebook live chat. Queen City Cabinetry, of course, one of our great sponsors here at WMNH 95.3 FM. You can bring your kitchen to life at Queen City Cabinetry in the historic Sunbeam Mall, named, of course, for the vaunted General Sunbeam, who would have, uh, General Sunbeam would have made a great speaker of the house or president, but, uh, but instead, he settled on a career of making bread in his retirement, of course, after he was uh, done in the military. A lot of people think General Sunbeam was killed in battle. Uh, that's actually not true. It makes for a better story. And regardless of how General Sunbeam was killed, we should honor him. However, uh, in the interest of truth, uh, he was, in fact, uh, killed in a terrible bread-making accident. Uh, apparently, uh, some... Uh, some hooligans uh, broke into the uh, kitchen one night while he was making some bread and started throwing bread around all over the place. And next thing you know, uh, uh, General Sunbeam was smothered to death by uh, uh, several loaves of bread uh, falling on his face all at once. He couldn't breathe. And the, uh, the hooligans uh, left there uh, with uh, several loaves of freshly baked bread, I might add. I'm sure they enjoyed uh, some delicious sandwiches later. Uh, as they uh, reflected on their, uh, I mean, it's manslaughter, I, I would say, of, uh, of the, the great General Sunbeam. But we honor him regardless. Uh, so uh, that's very important. Uh, let's see. JFed says John's not young enough for Matt. Oh, for Matt Gates. <laughs> I didn't know what you meant there for a second. I was like, what do you mean? It took me a second. Uh, you mean uh, Matt Gates? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Jenny says it's $125 uh, to be the New Hampshire House Speaker. You get the big bucks. Yes. Joe Friday joins us in the Facebook live chat and says, hello, peeps. Aloha. Hello. Hello, Joe Friday. John Hopwood says the yeast exploded, referring to uh, General Sunbeam. Uh, there, there, is, uh, there is evidence to suggest there may have been an explosion uh, when the hooligans were uh, throwing the bread around and Roughing up General Sunbeam, you know, he was an older man at that point, the general. Uh, you know, it's not like he could just fight off the hooligans. Now, listen, when General Sunbeam was a much younger man and when he was still in the mil military, you could uh, you could have uh, 10, 12, 15 hooligans all running into a kitchen all at once trying to mess with him, and he'd just fight them all off. But uh, as an older man, it, it was more difficult, you know, and, uh, you know, he'd eaten a lot of his, the, the bread himself, and, you know, he'd... You know, it's uh, he, he might have been a little bit uh, immobile uh, trying to fight off the hooligans. But we still love him. The point is, General Sunbeam, we love him. We honor him. Um, not just on the, 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 the day that we uh, commemorate uh, his passing or, the, or, or his birthday. Or, but every day. Every day. And that's why. I, I don't know if it's true. But I remember Mike from Queen City Cabinetry once saying, that every single day before he leaves uh, Queen City Cabinetry, he goes down to the basement in the Sunbeam Mall and he lights a candle for General Sunbeam. And I said to Mike once, I said, uh, aren't you worried about the uh, leaving a lit candle like that in the basement uh, when you leave for the day? And he said, uh, ah, I hadn't, uh, that hadn't occurred to me. Uh, we have a call. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? It's General Sunbeam. This isn't General Sunbeam. Now, how dare you? This is clearly John Hopwood. You're not fooling me. Now, had you said that you were the ghost of General Sunbeam, you might have fooled me. But you're clearly not General Sunbeam. General Sunbeam is dead. I'm transitioning. Ah, uh, no. I don't think uh, I don't think that's uh, a thing in this case, uh, John. I'm not fooled. I can't transition into General Sunbeam? I don't believe so. I mean, I support your choices, that, but uh, no, I don't think so. Isn't that part of my civil rights? Well, here's the thing. When uh, when General Sunbeam was still alive, a lot of that hadn't been settled yet. But uh, that's all right. Uh, listen, uh, you can be—I'll uh, uh, tell you what. This is America. You can be whoever you want to be. How's that? I would like women to Jesus. see me as like six foot two. How am I going to accomplish that without a court order? Uh, platform shoes. Platform shoes? Yeah. They, they have to be 10 inches tall. So what? Uh, people can walk on stilts. It's something you can learn to do. 
And you could probably look at Kiss. They wear those big boots on stage. You could do that. I have a bad back and a bum knee. So? Uh, th- 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 these I'd things much pre- can all be worked around. I'd much, you know, General Sunbeam died to get us the 14th Amendment. I'd much rather go to court and file a lawsuit and force the women to recognize me as six foot two. Okay. Maybe. Maybe, uh, and you know, maybe I want to. Some days I might just want to be uh, uh, even six feet. Some days I might want to be six seven. Six. Not six six, but six seven. What? Then I'll really look down on Peter White. You know, one of the days that, you know, one of his shorter days. That's true. He is an enormously tall man. He's a giant. Yes, he is a giant in so many ways. Mm -hmm. The giant of Manchester Public Radio. Actually, where does that leave you? Actually, uh, tonight is the uh, NHAB Awards, uh, and Peter is uh, going to be at that, uh, representing uh, WMNH with a few other personalities. I was invited to go, but the problem is I'd have to get there late uh, because it starts at like 5.30 in the afternoon. It's like, ah, that kind of... Getting there late kind of sucks. So I told Peter, I said, if somebody else from the station wants my ticket, so I think Paul took my ticket. I said, if somebody else from the station wants my ticket who can actually get there on time and, and enjoy the uh, enjoy the evening, by all means, uh, I'd rather somebody else get to do that than me, you know, stumbling in two hours into the event. You know what I mean? Holy, you know what? I just, uh, my window is falling out. Uh, you should see a doctor. Wait, did you, was that a metaphor, or do you mean literally a window in your home? <laughs> hey, let's forget about that. Oh. Uh, mm. I'm having a drink, Matt. I'm having a drink of cheap scotch. Uh-huh. That's the best kind. I'm celebrating. What are you celebrating, sir? I am celebrating because as we've had the national alert, which I just read it. I mistook that for my elevation to Speaker of the House. Uh It's actually an alert from the national something or other system. Yes. Which uh, simultaneously yesterday in Russia, they had their event uh, practicing a nuclear alert alert, like my sisters used to go through in the 1950s and the early 60s. I was born in... 1959. So, I uh, I uh, don't remember. We didn't. They didn't make us crawl on the desk. Oh, they didn't. Okay. No, that was over by then. But according to the bulletin of the atomic scientists, I guess we're closer to nuclear war than ever. So I'm celebrating. I have thought, uh, uh, you know, I've been very depressed lately, thinking about that my life was misspent. But let's just say, you know, we're closer to nuclear war than ever. There are these reports that you really can't substantiate, but people love to post them anyways as media, that not two, but three platforms, the United States has three aerial platforms, command platforms, for the nuclear, you know, warfare uh, command control system. And I only thought there were two. So, you know... But what do I know? I've been out of the business for quite a long time. China is allegedly on some type of high nuclear alert, too. So here I am, all incredibly depressed. I, you know, I had this big fight with some uh, person we won't talk about. Uh-huh. Uh, let's not get into that. And, uh, you know, that was depressing. Then you're thinking about your life. You know, I'm, I'm I'm starting to climb the ladder in years. You know, my birthday's coming up, and oh, uh, happy birthday! It's not quite one of those landmarks, but it's getting clo- too close for comfort. Uh-huh. And I'm thinking, you know, uh, I've been waiting since I was 22 to make a decision and do something with my life, and it looks like my life already made the decision for me. You know, and here I am. Uh, uh, what would you call it uh, in German? I'm on the Dreckhof. Dre- Dreckhof? What is it? Uh, let's just say, you know, uh, you're on your hiney in the uh, effluvia or whatever. <laughs> and now I'm realizing how if I had had that successful career as a, uh, as a lawyer and that, it could all be over in, in just minutes, right? 
kids, grandkids, big fat uh, bank accounts and investments that uh, from years of hard work. Right. Hey, I'm gonna. Uh, I've got. I've got it in my hand. I'm gonna don it now. Uh, uh, Jay- that's a half an ounce of cheap, cheap, cheap scotch. At least if I had done all what I should have done, I'd have a better bottle of scotch here to celebrate. Uh, Jay Fed is asking, are you almost 80? Uh, not quite. Because I've... Although my back and uh, sometimes my knee says otherwise. Because I've heard that our president, uh, Joseph Robinette Biden, actually has a coffee mug uh, on the uh, Resolute desk in the Oval Office that says life begins at 80. So you're just getting started, as far as I can tell. So the 60 is the new, uh, what, the 40? Uh, 60 is the new 59, I believe. Hey, there you go. But 80 but, is uh, the new uh, 77. As you know, I was 59 for two years. That's literally true. Oh. <laughs> I forgot that I was... Either that or I was 58 for two years, and suddenly it was like, hey, I'm 60. What happened to the year? What happened to, like, 59? I had just forgotten about it. Well, I I think you have plenty of time left. I think that you just probably need to take some vitamins, and you're going to have a long uh, life, long, healthy life. Mac, Mac, do we have any time left? Hmm. I'm glad that uh, your father on Friday uh, brought up St. Anselm, the accountant, and uh, the theory of a just war to have reincinerated over Ukraine. At least we know we're going someplace good, right? (laughs) It's not going to happen, John. It's not going to happen. You never know. Well, you never know, but it... it it's not going to happen. Hey, look, I mean, the wolf is always at the door regardless. As we've discussed on the show, we've had some very close calls over the years uh, because of misunderstandings and uh, accidents and so forth, Operation uh, Able Archer, things like that. And uh, and those are just the ones we know about. So the wolf is always at the door. So to, 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 to just go along assuming that we're about to be devoured— uh, uh, I don't know that we're any more about to be devoured than at any other point in history. So I, I know I know of three times where uh, we got there other than uh, Cuba that we were very close to nuclear war. Sure. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's my point. So, you know, there's always yeah, uh, the, the, th- uh, the threat is always there. That's that's all I'm saying. So. Always, always look on the bright side of life, right? Well, it's not really looking Whistle on the bright side of life, but, but, but it's just, well, it's no, it's not that. It's just recognizing that uh, the danger is always there. So it's not like we should be uh, particularly freaked out about anything right now. I mean, look, if uh, if I turn on the news one day. And I see that they're actually beginning to move around. That Russia is beginning to move around some of their news. And how would you how would you know that since all of that is classified? I'm just saying, if I turn on the news one day and I see that, then <laughs> then I'm going San then, then, Francisco then, just went off. Then I'm playing. then I'm going to worry. <laughs> then I'll, then I'll worry. But until then, I'm really not. Uh, I I got most of my worrying about that out of the way growing up. Growing up, I was very. Uh, obsessed is probably too strong of a word, but my dad knows, he, you know, he listens to the show. He knows I was very preoccupied would probably be the word with the threat of nuclear war. And then, you know, we had the post cold war, uh, sort of complacency that everyone fell into. And I guess now we're supposed to be back to being worried about it, but I got my worrying about it out of the way. So I think it's going to be fine. I'm not worrying about it, Matt. I'm celebrating it. Well, I'm not uh, going to celebrate uh, anything like that either, but I just, uh, I think it's going to be fine. It's a cure for, death is a cure for anything that ails you. They used to, there's a song from the 30s that love, it, it, love is a cure for anything that ails you, but mm-hmm. uh, I've never seen the, the, the love uh, last that long, you know, or mm-hmm. is as effective as, as penicillin. Mm. And indeed, love can make you uh, have to get a shot of penicillin. Oh. But uh, death, death is a cure for all things. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, as I'm calling you uh, here, you know, I'm calling you at four, uh, the four to five hour Wednesday because you poached my uh, permanent guest, which scuttled my show. 
He's uh, <laughs> somewhat facetiously. Uh-huh. And now he's not even he's not even here on the hour. No, no. Uh, because of his schedule uh, being what it is, he's now joining me in the second hour on Wednesdays. Uh, Eric is uh, n- not able to get uh, get to me in the first hour, which means uh, that uh, no, I did not poach your guest. You po- you did poach my guest, but. Uh... You're, yeah, he's not available yeah. in the first hour, which is when your show is on. If I had nu- if I if I had nuclear weapons, if like you know, if I was a suzerain of my own suzerainty, we'd have been uh, you know jockeying for position. I'm not saying I would have won, or uh-huh. I would have wouldn't would have backed on. Right. Because uh, as you've noticed, my enthusiasm for doing my show has uh, sharp <laughs> sharply decreased. Yeah, I, it, it did. Uh, it did occur to me uh, actually that you're supposed to be. Aren't you supposed to be on the air doing your show right now? Right, but you know, I remember when you, I wound up with that uh, when I moved from seven at night uh, to four on a Wednesday. <laughs> you laughed at me. Uh, you'd already, you know, had ma- transitioned to the radio and had given up your public access show. Little did I know that. Four, at four o'clock in the afternoon, it's like a uh, you know, uh, it's kind of like a death slot on yeah. TV. Yeah, not just, necessarily. Uh, yeah, not that, that radio, but TV. And I was rereading a novel by Norman Mailer, where his main character had a as a psychologist who had a public TV show, and it was at four. It was at four, the death slot. It's like, oh my god. Yeah, Matt knew, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just because four in the afternoon worked for Oprah doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody. Yeah, so, you know, and, uh, I, just, I just don't like doing shows alone. I never know what I might say or do. Huh. All right. I might act up or mm-hmm. humiliate myself or my family or... Or an assorted group of assorted groups of people, right? And uh, my other regular guests, whose names, at least one of whom we can't talk about, they just disappeared. I don't know what happened to them. I think we have to ask Rocky Huber what happened to them. They might have, who knows? They might have been kidnapped by an intelligent gas from uh, Venus or something. Right. Well, that's a good explanation. There's a lot of that going on. There's yeah. a lot of that going around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Somebody's trying to oh. call me. It says Concord, New Hampshire. Oh. I think I think my boat's come in that. Oh, good, good. Well, yes. Uh, whatever's left over from the hundred twenty-five dollars after I buy my license plate and my speaker of a house uh-huh. uh, name tag, we'll have a big party over at the uh, over at the uh, hop knot. Well, well, good as we should. Yes, there should be about ten or twelve dollars left over. Okay. <laughs> well, very. All good. right, Matt. Uh, keep the uh, flag flying. Yes. You know, nuclear terror is uh, is very debilitating. Uh-huh. I've overcome it with a very positive attitude that it's a good thing. <laughs> and uh, yes, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Now you take care. All right. Now I'm going to go count my money. That <laughs> all that money I piled up in my sixty some odd years. Wow! I, it might take me all of about two and a half minutes. Wow! All you right. Know, I got a lot of change I have to go through. Yes, yes. Well, Sorting the quarters, dimes. <laughs> okay, all right, care. all right, John. Thank you for the call. <laughs> bye bye. All right, that was uh, the great John Hopwood. Yeah, he should be doing his television show right now, actually, but but no. Well, that does open up the uh, studio line for you, 603-250-6007, Could have done without all the death talk, to be honest with you, after the weekend I had. But I do love John. I do love John. Uh, Melanie in the chat room says, uh, you support Hopwood's choices? Wow, that's a risky move. (laughs) Charles Richardson joins us in the Facebook live chat and says, it's hoppy hour. Hello, Charles. Uh, let's see. Uh, Charles uh, says, uh, you having a drink? I think, uh, you have had many drinks so far. No, I don't, I I doubt it. I doubt it. Um, Melanie says, is it me or is Hopwood saying nuclear weird? No, I think, I mean, John, I believe John always pronounces it correctly. There are a lot of people who mispronounce uh, nuclear though. Some people pronounce it nuclear, 
which is uh, almost like a dyslexic way of saying it because you're you have to literally rearrange some of the letters to pronounce it that way nuclear but uh but no uh, it's it is uh nuclear and i i think john does say it correctly um scott robinson says when is hopwood going to be on the show for a full day we need john he is sorely missed yeah john uh john hasn't been on for a while uh you know he comes and goes comes and goes you know sometimes there will be a stretch where he'll be on you know he'll pop in like once a week and then i won't see him for like months um joe friday says uh there is a oh fire versus police on october 14th Fire versus police baseball at Fisher Cat Stadium. All proceeds go to the Special Olympics. Um, the game was postponed from August due to weather. Oh, yeah, it rained a lot in August. Uh, please support uh, only donation accepted. Okay, very good. So that is on the uh, that is on October 14th uh, coming up soon. Very good, excellent. Uh, proceeds go to the Special Olympics. That's a great cause. Very good. Thank you, Joe Friday. Uh, Crystal in the chat room says, hello, everyone, from, of course, the great state of Illinois. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, <laughs> John Hopwood said in the chat room, John Hopwood died. I am John Hopwood. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. And if you're just joining us, uh, we do have in the coming up today in the second hour, we'll be joined by my favorite uh, my favorite conservative, as I call him, Eric Pilcher from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Um, in the meantime, should we? Oh, you know what? Actually, uh, there's um, all the fallout from uh, from Kevin McCarthy's ouster. But something else uh, that uh, is directly related to the uh, the Granite State, where we are here in New Hampshire, that Jenny just sent me. Uh, this is from WMUR, who I'm sure will uh, clean up tonight at the uh, New Hampshire Association of Broadcasters Awards, because as I uh, <laughs> as I like to, you know, we had somebody on the show the other day from WJYY 105.5 in Concord, and uh, he was in one of the bands that I had on the show. He's in uh, Pointless Culture, the the drummer there, Harrison, and I. Uh, he asked me off air about the awards, and uh, I, I joked with him that around here we refer to it as the WMUR WGIR awards. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> this is this is from WMUR.com. Giuliani, uh, w around here we call him Rudy. Uh, Giuliani sues Biden in New Hampshire for comments made during Nashville debate. Uh, New Hampshire attorney says law allows for defamation claims because the debate aired in the state. Okay, I don't know what this is about. Let's see. We'll learn together if you don't know the story already. And this was just updated a little bit ago. It says here, former New York mayor Rudy Giuliani has filed a defamation lawsuit in New Hampshire against President Joe Biden for comments made in a 2020 debate in Nashville. Hey, by the way, how does Giuliani... Uh, this... Uh, is, this is probably an obvious question. I can't be the only one wondering this. How does Giuliani even have any money to be filing a lawsuit like this? He can't even pay his existing legal bills, but he's got money to file a lawsuit against President Biden over th this, this defamation suit? Is somebody doing this for him as a favor? Maybe he's representing himself. I don't know. Uh, it says here, Giuliani, a close associate of former President Donald Trump. Yes, yeah, actually... Uh, uh, not only a, uh, a close associate, they tried to uh, they tried to overturn an election together. I don't I don't know if you all know that. I don't know if you if you pay attention to that kind of thing. Uh, some of you are probably aware. Anyway, uh, yes, Giuliani, a close associate of former President Donald Trump, was joined by New Hampshire attorney William O'Brien. Oh, is, is, <laughs> it's amazing how things go full circle. Speaking of a speaker of the House, uh, I I mean I assume it's the same Bill O'Brien. Although that's probably an extremely common name, so maybe it's not, but I assume it is. Uh, Bill O'Brien used to be the Speaker of the House uh, here in New Hampshire. I've I've uh, met Bill O'Brien. Actually, I hung out with him a little bit. He's at a uh, at an event that I went to. Uh, we talked for a while. Uh, nice guy. Um, I'd probably never vote for him, but uh, nice guy. Anyway, uh, so uh, Bill O'Brien and New York Attorney Louis Diamond uh, in making the announcement. Uh, they joined uh, Giuliani in making the announcement. Uh, in the lawsuit, Giuliani is accusing Biden of making defamatory and false statements during the debate, including saying that Giuliani was, quote, 
being used as a Russian pawn. What he did to me is intolerable. He called me a Russian operative. That's a lie. That is false, unquote. All right. Was well, calling him a, a Russian pawn the same as calling him a Russian operative? Because to me, that's not the same thing. Uh, am I am I getting too into the weeds? I mean, am I, maybe I'm overthinking it, but to me, if someone's a pawn, when I hear the word pawn, I think of someone being used by someone. You know, if you're somebody's pawn, they're using you for something. Whereas uh, an operative, if he were a Russian operative, that would mean he would be doing things on behalf of the Russians. But a pawn, a pawn is like another way of saying a useful idiot, like someone who's being used, but they don't necessarily know that they're being used. So to me, that's not even the same thing. If if Biden literally, if, if Biden called him a Russian pawn, that's not the same thing as calling him a Russian operative. That's like calling him a dupe who's being used by the Russians. Is that, is it, that I mean, <laughs> this is going to be a difficult case to prove, I think. And by the way, it's politics. I mean, I understand, you know, uh, you have to be careful. Uh, you can't go around defaming people, right? You get sued for defamation. But it's politics. People say horrible things about each other all the time. It's one politician saying something bad about another. You can sue somebody for that? Like somebody makes an offhand comment in a debate calling Rudy, Rudy Giuliani a Russian pawn? Really? Um... Says here, O'Brien said that because the debate aired on television in New Hampshire, a statute allows him to recover damages in the Granite State. Hmm. We have a call. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? I figured I'd call in twice today to irritate the haters. Uh, okay. The, the 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 hate be so real, Matt. And as somebody who has been sued for defamation, I know I was thinking about that. Yes, Matt. Pawn is a, a, a you know, just as you said it. He could have called him a cat's paw or something, you know. Or it's it's an, furthermore, it's an opinion, you know. Right. He's not saying this is a Russian agent. Right. This seems uh, pretty frivolous, uh, does it not? Frivolous uh, lawsuit. Right. Agent, agent as opposed to an officer, like James Bond would be an officer. Mm -hmm. An agent is somebody, you know, that has a, like somebody that's connected to the mob, right? But, uh, but he's, yeah. And, uh, but he's in Manchester, New, he's in New Hampshire that uh, Giuliani made this uh, statement. Did you catch that? Well, yeah. Hello. Yeah, he's he's he was in New Hampshire to announce this. Yes, he's suing. Why is he in New Hampshire to announce this? Uh, because the debate because he's working with Bill O'Brien and this other attorney, and uh, the debate aired in New. I guess the debate must have taken place in New Hampshire. It aired on New Hampshire television. So it really is Bill O'Brien who was the Speaker of the House and. Uh, I remember interviewing him, yeah. and then I interviewed John Sununu, the patriarch of the Sununu plant. They just liked each other, but I won't share the things they said. <laughs> yeah, uh, one of the things about defamation in New Hampshire, it's one of the states with a, loose, uh, a looser uh, definition of defamation. So it's a place that people uh, uh, can use, like Giuliani's doing now, to sue. Mm-hmm. That's what I was told by an out-of-state lawyer, uh, that New Hampshire, uh, it, it has less stringent uh, you know, law. Yeah. That's not to say that he has any chance of winning. But, no, this, uh, is, this is extremely frivolous. And how does he have the money to even do this? He's selling his, uh, his apartment in New York City 
because he can't afford to pay his life. He's actually, Rudy Giuliani right now is actually being sued by one of his own lawyers who he owes a ton of money to. That lawyer is now suing him to try to get his money, and apparently they're lifelong friends. So how does he even have the money to file a lawsuit like this? Which is probably why he's picked New Hampshire as the venue, because Bill O'Brien is probably doing it for nothing or a, no, a very nominal fee. Ah, Whereas a filing in a state with a higher bar of uh, proof for defamation. And, you know, there's very few people that win defamation suits. I always had a uh, defamation suit filed against me for writing a petition for someone about something we're not going to talk about because it's local politics. Mm -hmm. And it was thrown out with the judge all but calling the person that sued me, a politician that we don't talk about, a liar. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's a process that goes on for months. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's bizarre. And, uh, Bill, uh, Bill, uh, Bill O'Brien's probably just doing it because he's he's practically irrelevant now. Do we, we do we have any idea who uh, does he have a candidate in the New Hampshire pr uh, primary, the Republican primary? I don't know. I mean, I haven't even noticed uh, Bill O'Brien in in a long time. I I thought he was I thought he was pretty much out of politics at this point. Although I know he's right. been out of it before and he's come back, but I thought he was I thought he was done. I thought he was just you know practicing law at this point. I didn't. Uh, so I I don't know. Maybe he's trying to get back in. I don't know what's going on here, but I find it very odd. Yeah. Uh, for people that aren't from New Hampshire, Jenny would uh, knows you know having been in in the House and in the leadership. Uh, New Hampshire, uh, 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 a uh, secret house doesn't last very long. <laughs> we've, had, we've had plenty, unlike, you know, how it's supposed to be in the United States. Right. But uh, it just might be uh, Rudy Giuliani. Uh, this is my opinion. I don't want to wind up uh, being sued for defamation. Seems narcissistic, uh, which is probably one of the reasons he bonded with Trump. And... Uh, he just needed a hit of, uh, you know, of uh, ego adrenaline. Mm -hmm. So this is a place for two hundred seventy-one dollars. He can file this. Huh. You know. Oh, that's a bargain. So, yeah, but it's ridiculous. It's an opinion. The word pawn. I mean, pawn is, and the pawn being the weakest part of a chessboard. Right. That's like you're less than a cat's paw. You're less than a stalking horse. All stuff that really doesn't. And they're just metaphors that right. don't really mean anything. It's like right now they're saying Bobby Kennedy Jr. going to always meant to run as an independent, and now mediate. Uh, me is it how you pronounce it? Mediaite. Yes. It's, it's like mediaite is saying the sources say he's intending. Uh, uh, sources inside his campaign close to him say he's been intending to do this third party uh, uh, run to help Biden. So, which would be a stalking horse. Mm -hmm. But, you know, how do you prove stuff like that? But when you use right. words like that, you know, but if you said, yes, somebody's a Russian agent, you know, it's 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 a pathetic last gasp from a, you know, a pathetic person who he's not bleeding hair dye anymore. He's just bleeding the last vestiges of his self-respect. <laughs> Yeah, Trump's All been... All right, Matt. Trump, uh, Trump's I've given the haters kind of something to hate. <laughs> uh, I'm going to hang up and wait till 5 o'clock till that traitorous Eric comes on the show. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, he might be a... Uh, Eric, maybe Eric's a Russian pawn. I don't know if he's a Russian pawn, mm. but now that he is doing a review of The Exorcist, well, there is a Catholic doctrine which... You know, I had something that I wrote about a long time ago, but which William Peter Blatty, who wrote The Exorcist, which is a real great pot boiler. I mean, mm -hmm. you, know, you just pick the book up. You can't put it down. Yeah. It, it, based on if you think of the devil, you've invited the devil in to think about you. Oh. You've invited it into your life. Ooh. That's why you have to be so wary about stuff like the Ouija board. Because mm -hmm. that's in the novel and it's in the movie, too. So I, I just feel sad about Eric, you know, although mm -hmm. he is a Protestant, I believe. Mm -hmm. And so the bar of letting the devil in might be uh, higher, you know, <laughs> higher. Right. You know, with Catholics, it's like the state of New Hampshire in defamation. If you're a Catholic, you know, with all that guilt and stuff, 
you know, the devil can get right in very easily, Ooh. you know. Ooh. You just have to, you know. That's not good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really <laughs> think about the devil. You know. What well, I mean? it's, it's, apparently, I you shouldn't think about the devil because then the devil might be thinking about you. So I think we've learned something That's today. That's right. That's right. That's right. And now uh, I'm going to have my second shot of scotch, Charles Richardson, because it doesn't <laughs> take any substances to screw me up. I'm already screwed up. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, John. Thanks uh, for the call. Bye bye. All right. Uh, if you'd like to get in with a quick call before the top of the hour, the studio line is open. It'll just have to be, uh, I would ask you to be terse, but uh, 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. Uh, just to finish up on this, O'Brien said that because the debate aired on television in New Hampshire, a statute allows him to recover damages in the Granite State. By the way, how would you even prove damages on, on something like that? O'Brien also said, quote, we have a rule in New Hampshire called the single publication rule. And what that rule means is that when you can establish that a defamation occurred within the jurisdiction within New Hampshire, the plaintiff can recover for each instance it occurred elsewhere, unquote. Okay, so if the debate aired here in New Hampshire, but it was also shown elsewhere, I guess. Uh, Giuliani is requesting a jury trial and is asking the judge to order Biden to publicly acknowledge the allegations and pay him damages. All righty then. Crystal said in the chat room, maybe Giuliani has the money, but his accounts are frozen until his legal issues are resolved. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The last I heard was he was selling his uh, New York apartment for like $6 million because, uh, he, you know, he's having difficulty paying his legal bills. Oh, and Trump recently had a fundraiser. Boy, what a guy, huh? Trump recently had a fundraiser for his uh, his friend uh, Rudy Giuliani to, to, to try to help him. Um. Oh, Chris Rose from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts joins us in the chat. Hello, Chris. Uh, John Hopwood says, uh, to get damages, you have to have a reputation that is damaged. He has no reputation anymore. Well, apparently Bill O'Brien's still alive. Bill, Bill O'Brien must think uh, Giuliani has a reputation because he's willing to associate his name with him. <laughs> I don't know if I would do that. but Anyway... We are close to the top of the hour. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll uh, play a little music. We'll show some love to our amazing sponsors. And then we'll be back with our number two, Numero Dos. Uh, I think uh, our friend Eric Pilcher is going to be joining us. It'll maybe 10 past the hour, quarter past the hour. Uh, he's going to try to get to us uh, as soon as he can. I know that. And uh, always enjoy uh, speaking with Eric and uh, look forward to hearing his, his uh, looking forward to hearing him speak about the speaker, getting his uh, thoughts on that. So uh, let's play a little uh, Jerry, a little Jerry Robinson here. I do love this song, Unicycle. I wish I could play for you the uncensored version because it is there's a line in it that is beyond hilarious. But I had to make a radio edit for this one. But it is my favorite of the Jerry and the Scumbag songs. <laughs> it is my absolute favorite. So this is the one I like to go to. There's a bass player on this who's really good. His name's Matt Covington. Hmm. Anyway, uh, here it is. This is uh, Unicycle from Jerry and the Scumbags. And uh, more Unleashed coming up. Don't go away.
the hop knot at 1000 elm street manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar tell us more trudy we make our dough fresh every day we make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer cocktails and a few bottles of wine we do the traditional pretzel and we have multiple flavors for that we also do stuffed pretzels pretzel sandwiches free dessert pretzels and pretzel knots the hop knot in the brady sullivan plaza at 1000 elm street Bring your kitchen to life with Queen City Cabinetry, located at 87 Elm Street in the historic Sunbeam Mall in Manchester. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They can be reached at 603-222-2007 or on the web at queencitycabinetrynh.com. Come see the possibilities. Queen City Cabinetry, another proud sponsor of WMNH. Clemento's, Clemento's Pizzeria, family friendly, awesome for a date night. Clemento's, Clemento's Pizzeria, for delivery call 603-782-8450. Clemento's Pizzeria, the best pizza in town. 1875 South Willow Street in Manchester, New Hampshire. Best cocktails around. Come in as friends and leave as family. This hour on WMNH is sponsored by CGI Business Solutions, located at 5 Dartmouth Drive in Auburn. They serve all your business needs, including employee benefits planning, corporate design and business administration, investments and wealth management, and customized business insurance solutions. Their phone number is 866-841-4600 or on the web at cgibusinesssolutions.com. WMNH, rip the knob off. You listening to WMNH 95.3. Welcome, everybody, as we enter our number two numero dos of Matt Connerton Unleashed. And we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97 if you're in Manchester. And hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. You can go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all of your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, et cetera, et cetera. Did I say Channel 6 or Channel 97? I feel like I might have accidentally said 97 again. Living in the past, Channel 6, uh, Comcast. Uh, today, of course, is Wednesday, October 4, 
2023. And I believe our friend Eric Pilcher is on the line. Eric, is that you? Yes, it is, Matt. Sorry, I have to call in and not Skype in because I'm on the go right now. That's okay. Uh, yes, uh, John Hopwood was lamenting earlier that uh, <clears throat> that I had uh, stolen you away from him. And I said, uh, how's that even possible? Eric joins me uh, now during the second hour. Well, it, here's the thing is I, I'm not trying to put anyone on the spot or anything, but John Hopwood has not contacted me to take part in his show. Ah, yes, yes. So I would love to be back on his show again because I, I do love conversing with John Hopwood. Yes. Well, but with your current schedule, it wouldn't be possible anyway. He's on Wednesdays at 4 on uh, Channel 23. I mean, we could always pre-record something. You That's know, true. There are options, and I would be willing to hear what those options are. Ah, yes. See, Matt, fle flexibility is the key with me. Yeah. And you're very flexible with me. That's why this is a great working relationship. Uh, by the way, John uh, in the chat room, in all caps, says, that is a small technicality, Eric Pilchard. He's... Uh, not saying your name correctly now well there's someone there's someone else who doesn't say my name correctly there so. are a few uh, variations and of course your stage name in uh, jerry and the scumbags is uh, eric pincher yes you know we you know i i'm very proud of my work with jerry and the scumbags i i i i can't wait to get my riaa platinum recording album i know right that's gonna be sweet that's uh not an easy thing to get in the streaming era but uh, as it continues no. to uh, streak up the charts, I'm confident that that day will come soon. Yes. I mean, just something else I can add to my resume, you know, that you have filled out amazingly, Matt. Oh. So I do appreciate that. Yes. Well, happy to uh, happy to, to help. Uh, of course, uh, we have. Um, should we uh, should we talk about uh, I mean, we, we can uh, remind everyone later, but uh, should we talk about uh, The Exorcist? Uh, you went, uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yes. I, I saw it again in theaters this Sunday. Yes. Um, Sunday night. And it is still to me, the scariest film ever made. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I don't think anything touches it. And any, it's like any film that deals with possession tries to copy it. And you can't copy it. Well, I can't even you think. Can't um, cop er Eric, what what other films are are there? Other because I can't think of anything offhand. I mean, obviously, I know there are others, but is is there another um, film, or are there other films that try to really kind of do do something uh, similar to The Exorcist I mean, the, in that the, way? The one that uh, there's a new one called The Pope's Exorcist or The Pope's Exorcism. It's oh. like any time you deal with devil possession, they try to take elements from the exorcist. And it just comes off as unauthentic, fake and phony, because the here's my belief, and you caught me on a tangent, and I'm sorry, Matt. Oh, that's all right. Is to make a truly great film, one that stands the test of time. It's 50 years later, and people still are in awe of The Exorcist. Mm -hmm. You have to have the perfect blend. Great writer, great director, great cast, a little bit of controversy. The Exorcist had all of that. You look at some of the people in that film, it's their greatest performance. Ellen Burstyn, her greatest performance. Jason Miller, her greatest. Uh, his greatest, Linda Blair, argu arguably her greatest. Mm -hmm. So, and William Friedkin, other than the French Connection, probably his greatest go as a director, although To Live and Die in L.A., I think is very underrated as a film. Um, and, so, I, yeah. and I think the uh, Wang Chung song is also very underrated. Uh, well, there's nothing about Wang Chung that is underrated. Oh. They are very fairly trashed and bashed. Oh, no. I have to disagree with you there. I love Wang Chung. 
But uh, I digress. I, th- I the only I you know the only thing I think when I think of Wang Chung, I think of the line from Austin Powers. Yeah. When he's like, "We will call it the Alan Parsons Project," and Scott Evil goes, "How about you call it what?" operation wang chung yeah yeah and so yeah i i mean i'm not overly familiar with their work oh, i just no. yeah um so uh but but so there are other so you mentioned you mentioned one other other film i feel like it's a subject uh that probably i mean it it is uh it's probably considered a little bit taboo in this whoa what was that? It's probably. It, 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 uh, sorry. <laughs> what was that? Uh, a very, very piece of junk, piece of junk car that needs a tune up very badly. Oh, okay. Um, See, in Cedar Rapids, we don't emissions test our vehicles. Yeah. To make them roadworthy. Yeah. We probably should, mm-hmm. but we don't. I understand. I understand. Um, so a lot of people have. Horrible vehicles. I see, I see. Yes. So what? Uh, I mean, I mean, it's probably considered a somewhat uh, taboo subject, right? Because it's because the thing about exorcism is, you know, I mean, you know, you can in in the if you want to put that in the horror movie genre, which I don't know where else you would put it, really. Um, you know, it's one thing to make a film about werewolves or zombies or whatever, but when you deal with something like exorcism. You're dealing with something that um, a lot of people think is real, and 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 maybe you do. I don't know. Um, maybe I do. I mean, I, I've I've known a couple of people who have told me some some personal stories of experiences they've had where I go, wow, that's really. Uh, but 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 you know what I mean? It's like you're you're dealing with something that that a lot of people are open, and I think that's what makes The Exorcist so frightening. It's like are we sure that this is just a horror movie or does this actually happen? You know what I mean? Right. Here's, here's my take. And I, I, I want to preface this by saying um, I would appreciate, you don't have to agree with my beliefs, but I would appreciate respect for my beliefs. Sure. Sure. Um, as I have shown everyone respect for their beliefs, thoughts, and opinions. Yeah. I do believe baptism of the Holy Spirit is a very real thing. Mm -hmm. Speaking in tongues and all of that, I believe, is real. So conversely, I believe you you cannot have good without evil. Mm -hmm. Can't have it. Uh, It goes back to the whole Star Trek analogy when the good Kirk and the evil Kirk they were separated. Neither of them could survive. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's one of my favorite um, episodes. Need, one of mine, too. Very yeah. underrated episode and very early in the show's run. So yeah. I do believe people can be possessed by the devil. And I think that's why The Exorcist is so scary and harrowing because we're taking something innocent as a young child and double down on that, a young female and interjecting pure unadulterated evil into her. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it is so powerful, so scary and so frightening to this day. Yeah. You know, have you ever had anyone, um, you ever have anyone tell you a story and for whatever reason, the particular story that the, this person is telling you, it's, um, you can, you can, uh, some people are just really good storytellers, but you know, where, but has anyone ever told you a story where even though, uh, you're just hearing them talk about it, you can really kind of something about the story or maybe the way that they're telling it, you can really get a clear picture of what they're explaining to you. Um, yes. I had so so I mean as far as uh, the reason I say that I say that to preface what I'm about to and I don't think I've ever repeated this before what I'm about to say but um well the part I have repeated of course is you know I'm I'm not a, a religious person myself and I'm I'm pretty skeptical right. about all of this and so naturally I'm not 
I'm not predisposed to believing in, in things like uh, possession and things like that. But I'll tell you something that has always stuck with me, Eric. When I was in junior high school, I had an English teacher named Mr. Phelps. And Mr. Phelps told a lot of stories. He was a great guy. He was one of my favorite teachers. He was one of everybody's favorite teacher. And everybody loved Mr. Phelps. And he told a story one day that just something about this story has always stuck with, I was like in eighth grade when I heard this story, but it's always, no, I'm sorry. I was in ninth grade. It was at public school, but it's always stuck with me for some reason. I've never forgotten this. He had a friend in college who was a mountain climber and his friend, the mountain climber had some sort of an accident where he ended up in a full body cast and he was either he was in a coma or he was not in a coma, but it was difficult for him to maintain consciousness for long periods of time. So he goes to visit his friend in the hospital who's in this full body cast and he's just in terrible shape. And um, uh, he's, he's sitting there with his friend and his friend is sort of in and out of consciousness. So he knew that Mr. Phelps was there. But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, his friend's eyes just pop open, like wide open. And he reaches over and he grabs uh, Mr. Phelps's hand and starts squeezing it really hard and starts grunting at him. And Mr. Phelps is looking him in the eyes. And this always stuck with me. It, it, it only lasted a few seconds. But Mr. Phelps said during those few seconds, it was the most terrifying moment of his life. And he said, as he's looking in his friend's eyes, his friend was not there. Like somebody else was in there for those few seconds. And Mr. Phelps, he said, he said, look, I, you know, I don't really believe in any of that stuff, but, but, but I've never forgotten that uh, because uh, for, for those few seconds, somebody else was there and it was really frightening. And Mr. Phelps telling that story that has always stuck with me. Whenever the subject comes up, I think about that story. And it's just weird how that story, Mr. Phelps told a lot of stories. I don't remember any of them, except that one has always kind of haunted me a little bit. D does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And the reason why it does is because the, any story that has any, if you look at some of the scariest or memorable tales, Mm -hmm. They all have a high degree of realism about that. Oh, yeah. And I think that that's something that we always forget when we see, when we hear spooky stories or scary stories or horror films and things like that. We hear these things and we just, we really forget uh, why it scares us or why it sticks sticks with us and it sticks with us because it is so frightening it is so scary because it is so real mm -hmm. and that's my belief yeah because i can't think of anything else in the horror genre that fits that other than stories about exorcism right like i said anything else you know zombies you know werewolves whatever right you you, you know that's not real but exorcism is the one thing. Right. I, I mean, unless unless there is something else I'm not thinking of. Maybe there is something else. I guess aliens, but that's not really a horror movie. That's sci-fi. Um, well, I, I'm going to disagree with you, Matt. Aliens is one of the top ten horror films for me all time. Oh, alien, the, oh, not alien. Oh. Alien is... Yeah, yeah. Just, it is terrifying. Because people forget you don't see... The, the, the xenophobe, the xenomorph until near the very end. And it's this build up to the queen alien that makes it so, so terrifying. Um, you know, so, I, I've never actually, so yeah. you know, I've never actually seen that movie. I never wanted to. Oh. So, something, something about it uh, turned me off. I don't know exactly what it was, but I never, I've never wanted to see that movie. Is it Tom Skerritt? I, I doubt it. I don't know what it is. I have no problem with Tom Skerritt. I don't know what it is about it, but something about it uh, never, just never appealed to me. I, I can't quite explain it. It, it certainly is a different movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, it really is. 
Well, what is that? So, uh, music. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, Scott Robinson in the chat room says, zombies can be real mad. They can be real. Oh, they can be real mad. I think he's using uh, voice to text. I don't think zombies can be real. I mean, I've, uh, I've certainly seen some people who... Uh, uh, it sort of behave like zombies, but I just assume they're either uh, on something or they're very tired. Yeah, I mean, there are some that behave like zombies currently in our Senate. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. Um, Scott also says, The Shining always gets me. I can never finish it. Uh, it spooks the heck the out of me. The Shining is another mm. one. But my issue with The Shining is that it really isn't... I'm always torn on The Shining. As a film, it's it's easily up there in regards to horror being a great horror film. Mm -hmm. But if you read the book and then watch the movie, you're going to get one of two emotions. That's a disappointment, or you're going to hate Stanley Kubrick. Really? For what he did. Because they're vastly different, the book and the movie. Uh, Stephen King, after that, was never going to have one of his books adapted into a film again. Really? Huh. Yes, because of the liberties Stanley Kubrick took. Oh, interesting. Um... Yeah, the miniseries with Stephen Weber from the TV show Wings is truer to the novel than the movie. I've never, uh, I've never seen the TV series. I, I read the book when I was a kid, and I've seen the movie. I like the movie, but it, that's it ma has, mainly because of Jack Nicholson. He's just incredible. I watched. I made the mistake of watching the movie first and then reading the book. Yeah. And I regretted that. Really. Yeah. Um, Scott. Yes, I re I regretted that move. Scott says in the chat room, as an avid reader myself, if you read a book and then watch the movie, 99.9% .9 out of 100, you will be disappointed in the movie. Well, the book usually is better. I mean, that's just a general, I, and I don't just mean with Stephen King. I just mean in general, the book is usually better. Not always, right, that, but usually. Fair. Yeah, yeah. But usually, yeah. Um, that's I, fair. But I, I'm saying the liberty Kubrick took. Yeah, yeah. Greatly changed the story i don't even remember it's and been that's unfortunate it's been so long like i because I, I i would I, yeah go and ahead. of course i bring this up and lose the frame of reference because there are things that were done that i can reference and be like okay this is what i'm talking about but it's been so long that i yeah. i can't even but i do know there are major major differences yeah that yeah are just that are just crazy to think about. Uh, JFed in the chat room says, we stayed at the hotel The Shining is based on. We stayed in a haunted room, but didn't see anything. Hmm. Um, that's false advertising. That, that's right. That's right. Um, I do. I, 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 I would I, be very upset. Yeah. I, I do believe in uh, in uh, you know ghosts and stuff. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm I, oh, I, I do believe in that too. I, I approach everything skeptically, but I've also had some experiences that uh, cannot uh, easily be explained. Um, I think I, I think I got into all of it on the show one one time a long time ago, and probably a lot of the audience thinks I'm crazy, but that's okay. Um, we should uh, we should talk about you know we'll we'll circle back to the Exorcist in a bit because I do want to remind people about what's uh, what's coming up. But um, you told me on the phone earlier about something that just happened in Cedar Rapids. Yeah, we had a very unfortunate situation transpire here in Cedar Rapids. Um, basically, uh, Sunday, sometime Sunday, there was an individual that created a TikTok video. Uh, used voice, voice disguising and blurred out his image and basically threatened to shoot up some schools, two schools in particular, and had a list with a picture of a gun. 
had a list with a gun sitting beside it. Um, and um, very bizarrely, uh, the individual said twice in, in the TikTok video that he was not white. He wanted to make that very clear. Mm-hmm. That he was not white. He was. He was. Wouldn't say what race he was. Mm-hmm. But he just would kept. He said twice, "I am not white." Yeah. But he threatened to shoot anyone who was of African American descent. My issue is school district solution to this was cancel classes on Monday, but have them go to school on Tuesday when he said he was going to do it. So he's and Monday night they sent they sent an email to parents, basically putting the onus on the parents to do the right thing and teach your kids. So he, uh, so he specifically, so this just to uh, be clear, this individual, he said in the video that he was going to do this on Tuesday, but they, but he posted the video on Monday, so they canceled school on Monday, but on, then, but then he ha- posted the video on. Sunday. Oh, on Sunday. So they canceled school on Monday, but had school, yep. but had school on Tuesday. But they emailed uh, the uh, parents on Monday. Yep, to basically say, "Hey, this is what you can do to protect your kids." Yeah. Um, we're we're, we're sending them to school anyway, and and the email was pretty ridiculous. Like, just like if you see anyone who could be construed as suspicious point out to your kid like what these individuals look like Mm -hmm. and it's like well no it doesn't work like that you know now how does uh how does tiktok deal with that when 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 a video like that is posted do they uh what do they do um i i would assume they remove it pretty quickly yeah. Um, if I had to guess, um, I do know that the FBI is involved, which to accelerate getting information from TikTok, mm-hmm. the FBI would be would have to be involved. Yeah. Um... So I do I do know that is going on. But for me, it's just disturbing that if if the pandemic taught us anything, it's you can teach kids virtually. If need be. To me, this is the perfect situation to do that. It, it's, it, we will cancel school if there's two inches of snow on the ground. <laughs> uh, but, you know, a uh, possible active shooter situation, we're going to cancel the day, the day after the threat's made. But the day he actually said he was going to do it, and I'm saying he and I shouldn't because we don't know. Right. Um, Dave's going to actually do it. Send the kids. It, it, it's, it's disturbing because you think in your head that what they're doing is really, it's like they're baiting him to try something in a way like, Oh, the kids are here. Come on, Mr. Whoever you are, or Mrs. Whoever you are. Right. Come and do what you're going to do. It's, um, it's kind of, an it, it's, it's, Stupid. It's um kind of an impossible situation though because um anybody at any time can make a video making a threat. They may or may not be serious, and you're you're kind of at their mercy, right? Uh, especially in the social media era, where be, because you know, I mean, any anybody can make a threat like that, and and uh, what do you do? I mean, if you if you um call off school people are going to have a problem with that well you know because you're you're reacting to every uh, little threat but at the same time what if what if the threat turns out to be legitimate and they really are going to do something and and you've sent the kids to school anyway i mean it's really kind of a no-win situation i and i get that but i think at i think to send them on the day the person said they were going to do it. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. That that is just completely insane to me. Yeah. It just is. 
Yeah. And it, it, it just really bothers me that, you know, we have proven what you can do virtually. It's been proven. Why wouldn't we do this? Although in, ter- in, in, in terms of that, I mean, there are during the pandemic when when uh, school districts were doing that, it went well some places, not so well others. I mean, results will vary. Um, it went it went well in Cedar Rapids. Now, it? I don't I mean, keep in mind, there was the ability to do a full rollout and put backup plans in place and whatever. Yeah. But in this situation, it's like, oh, we're all Zoom tomorrow. I get that. But it, it, it's like the saving grace of this email was we have lockdown procedures. Mm-hmm. So the procedure is wacko person comes into a school to shoot it up. We're going to lock all the doors and trap them in the school with this individual. Yeah. I I, yeah. Um, do uh, do schools there have an officer on uh, on campus? Some do. Yeah. Some do. And I guess you bring up a very good point, Matt. One of the schools that was targeted does have an officer on duty. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think they all should. But uh, yeah, that's um, so they haven't they haven't found the person who posted the video, I assume. No. Okay. No, and the thing is, is it, the person it suspected is a minor, so oh. there might not be a lot of details when oh. they do find out. I mean, the FBI is involved, so they will find out. Right. Um. Ah, interesting. <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that it hasn't uh, that shooting hasn't come to fruition. That's good. Yeah, I think right. I, I I think it's I I do think that it's odd that they would send the kids to school on the day that uh, the 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 uh, shooting was supposed to happen, uh, according to this uh, video. But but it is. But but I, I do have some sympathy though for the school district too. It's like because I, I mean we're in an era where anybody at any time could post anything, any kind of a threat, and you don't want to be you don't want to be at the whim or the mercy of of just uh, people who want to make trouble or people who actually want to kill somebody, you know, it's, um, it's, that's, that's really tricky. I think. I, and I get that. And it makes a lot of sense. Keep in mind, I live in Cedar Rapids. So my heart is yeah. really kind of hardened on sympathy towards the Cedar Rapids community school district. <laughs> right. Uh, they, they've done a lot over the years where I'm just like, really, <laughs> you know that type deal so, sure yeah. sure but I, it's good you have it you can carry that torch for both of us <laughs> there you go there you go um oh we should uh too uh, uh the time goes so quick uh we should talk about uh the big news uh this week and the uh speaker uh the uh, uh speaker of Why? the house has been uh vacated and uh I guess my point of view on it is I don't like Matt Gates is the world's biggest idiot in my opinion. And I have no problem saying that. Yeah. Kevin McCarthy did what he felt was best to avoid a government shutdown. Mm -hmm. When we are faced with a shutdown, my opinion is this. We have to be bipartisan. Oh, yeah. We have to work together to avoid this. Mm-hmm. We can't sit here and say, oh, well, don't don't accept this deal because it has this in it. Right. No, we have to find some common ground for the good of the American people. So to sit there and oust Kevin McCarthy, and I'm not a Kevin McCarthy defender in any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. I... I mean, I would say under normal circumstances, do you. Awesome. Get rid of him. Guy's an imbecile. Good work. (laughs) But, like, in this situation, he did what was right for the people of this country. Mm -hmm. And you, and Matt Gates is touting a personal vendetta 
to get what he wanted. So I, I think it, I think it's, I, I think it, I've always said this on your show. Mm -hmm. We as the American people should not be used as pawns in a game of chess. Right. And Matt Gates used us as pawns in a game of chess. He got the checkmate he won, but it, it, that can't be ignored. Yeah. Um, my biggest concern is uh, that this really plunges us into some chaos that is very bad for the country. I mean, it's like I, I've, I've been saying on the show, you know, I, I think as, as a political junkie, it's fascinating to watch all of this happening, but it's very bad for the country. Um, you know, we've only got, I think, 42 days now until this continuing resolution is up. I don't know what they're going to do. I, the, the House is effectively paralyzed until they find a new speaker. I don't know who can get to 218. And there are arguments about that on who should be the speaker. Yeah. It, let's, yeah. let's put that at the crust of this here, if we can, mm -hmm. that no one, that there's arguments on that. So I'm not going to sit here and act like that everything's hunky-dory now that, now that, uh, now that uh, McCarthy's gone, as some conservatives are, yeah. that just once again have this have this major league uh, messiah complex with anyone that's a Republican, and we we got to get away from that because there are some Republicans that are very dangerous for this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and Matt, Matt Gates is one of them. Mm hmm. Yep. Absolutely. It, I, and uh, I have no qualms saying that. No, no. Um, and I, and by the way, I'm sure most House Republicans feel the same way. Uh, Matt Gates is probably the most despised individual in the United States House of Representatives right now by by his own by his own party. Um, uh, you know, aside from, of course, the other seven who voted with him. I'm, I'm sure the rest of him despise uh, Matt Gates, uh, and I'm sure probably all. I would have. like to know. I would like to know the reason why they sided with him. Oh, I think I think there's that contingent that just uh, they're not they're not in it for the good of the country or even for the good of their party. Uh, they're they're in it for the fame. You know, Matt Gates is in it for the fame. He that that guy's clearly. Look, I'm not qualified to diagnose him, and certainly not from a distance, but I'm pretty sure he's a sociopath. And uh, he's in it for the fame and the, the notoriety and the glory, and he wants to— I mean, he's a, he's a sitting—we're talking about a guy who is a sitting member of the House of Representatives who also sometimes uh, guest hosts a show on Newsmax. I've never seen that before, where a sitting member of the House actually— not, not as a guest, but will actually go and host a show— <laughs> on a, actually, I'm wrong. I, Bob Dornan used to do it. I forgot about Bob Dornan, uh, but that I, goes that goes back a couple decades. But anyway, give, give us give us time. We might have a president that ends up doing it. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, we may very well. I actually was hoping, and I understand why they didn't. You you actually still have hope right now. I do. Oh, you it's hanging by a thread, but. I, well, I actually was hoping that the Democrats would save McCarthy. I understand why they didn't. I understand all the reasons why they felt no obligation to help. But honestly, just putting politics aside and just looking at it pragmatically, I wish they had. I, I understand why they don't trust him. And they're right. There's not a single reason the Democrats could give for not doing it that I can argue with directly on the merits except for, in a broader sense, to say, for the good of the country, I wish they had saved him. Because now we're, and I don't mean to be alarmist, but now we're in real trouble here. Um, they can say, well, it's a Republican problem and we're not under any obligation to help. And I, I get it. I understand that impulse. Uh, and you know, I have no, uh, I have no love, uh, for, uh, McCarthy myself. Certainly I have, uh, enormous criticisms, right. but, but for the good of, for, for, you know, looking at it, looking at the bigger picture, 
pragmatically for the country. You know, I they, they don't like him, of course, and they don't trust him, but it's the devil. <coughs> it, 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 this, this kind of brings it full circle because we were talking about the exorcist earlier. It's the devil you know. They, yep. they should have saved and the devil be, they knew. Let's be real I, here. I, I could be, I, I might be wrong in my belief, but it's my belief. Kevin McCarthy is too stupid to be shrewd. He isn't like, like his own stupidity and gull- gullibility put him in this. In my opinion, he forgot he was a politician and hmm. got just, Steamrolled. It, he he is like it, it. Kevin McCarthy is the opposite of House of Cards in Frank Underwood. <laughs> like you, that's the thing is Matt Gates did a power play on little Jimmy who was held back in third grade twice because he can't spell cat. Hmm. Oh, it's, it's interesting. See, I have a different, I have a different uh, perspective on, uh, on on McCarthy, which is kind of funny because um, uh, you you would think uh, just just because it. What was that? Oh, sorry. There's wind. I'm outside right now. My apologies. <laughs> that, that's okay. Just making sure. <laughs> Yeah. Just be, making sure you weren't swept away. It's been a beautiful day just <laughs> until I stepped outside. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Um, no, I, I, I think that, uh, I think McCarthy, um, look, he, he actually, believe it or not, as much as there are many things about him that I find absolutely despicable, but I also, he did win a little bit of grudging respect for me from me when, for example, I really thought we were going to hit the debt ceiling and go over the fiscal cliff and that Biden was going to have to attempt to invoke the 14th Amendment. And McCarthy said all along, we'll get it done, we'll get it done, we'll get it done. And it was it was right at the wire, but he came through. And same with this government shutdown. I didn't think he'd be able to avoid it. And he, he figured it out and he made it work and he avoided it. So I don't think he's I, I don't think he's stupid. I, I but I think he I think he may have Maybe. been Stupid is too strong of a statement. Yeah, I think he, I think he ch- was so gullible he trusted his party too much to have his back, I, and that cost him. And yeah. I'm with you. I will give him credit for putting the people ahead of party politics. That that is something that this country needs to do a yeah. lot more of. Yes, yes. And that's what the Speaker of the House should do. Yeah. We sit here and we, we say, well, no, 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 no. The Speaker of the House should do this. Speaker of the House should do that. No. The Speaker of the House should put the country first. Mm-hmm. Unequivocally. And that's what he's done in those two occasions. And Matt Gates just showed what, and I love the word sociopath you used to describe him because it is sociopathic. Yeah. That he puts his own need for attention Mm -hmm. ahead of the American people, me, you, the listener. It, It, Like, that can't be ignored. And I know there are some conservatives that are sitting there cheering like this is a football game. (laughs) Like, oh, Matt Gates stuck it to him. Good job, Gates. (laughs) Really? Uh... Really? Do you see the chaos that this is going to cause? Yeah, but in the end, we showed them. You're either with us or against us. Trump 2024. Woo! Um, Newt Gingrich is saying, and I and I I was saying the other day on the show how it's it's a rare moment that I would agree with Newt Gingrich, but uh, Gingrich is saying that they should figure out a way to expel Matt Gates from the conference uh, because uh, he can't you know he can't just be allowed to get away with this. I'd sign off on it. Yeah, 
I'd, I'd sign off on it multiple times. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any, any time. To me, look, there are things you can do, and me as a quasi-political pundit will say, you know, that was scummy, but you're forgiven. Using the American people as pawns? No. That's unforgivable. Yeah. I agree. And that is the one thing that I look at and I'm like, you know what, Matt Gates, congratulations. You are a piece of garbage human being. Yeah. Well, it's like it's funny. I, I saw uh, Jake Tapper was uh, interviewing him the other day on uh, I think it was on one of the Sunday shows, and uh, I, I thought Jake Tapper went a little bit overboard with what he uh, what he did, but he he's kind of confronted Matt Gates and said, you know, I I think you're just in this for clicks and likes and uh, social media engagement, not governing, and. Um, <laughs> you know, but but uh, Gates, he doesn't uh, the the criticism doesn't seem to bother him. I think he thrives on it. I think he just loves being on TV, and I I think he I think he here, wants the show. He uses it like Trump does. Yeah. Oh, definitely. He uses it like Trump does. It is martyrdom, and he can then turn around and say, "Oh, he's targeting me. They're targeting me because they because I'm protecting them from you." Yeah, I know. I know. Hey, I, I'm sorry. That's exactly what he's what he does, and what he will continue to do. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. It's frustrating. It, 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 it's it, it, it's disturbing that all these sociopathic conservatives do this, and people rally to them when they do it. Well, like I said, I mean, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of uh, reasonable and uh, and even a few, uh, although I think most of the moderate moderate Republicans, you tend to see more in the Senate. But but I think there's um, th- there's more reasonable, shall we say, and more establishment Republicans in the House um, who, like I said, I mean, I'm sure Matt Gates is public enemy number one uh, to them right now. Uh, you know, they know he's going to he's going to cost them. He's definitely going to cost Republicans the House in 2024. I have no doubt about that because he's made them look like they can't govern. And I'm sure they would love for him to go away. And and these these other enablers, too, I'm sure, you know, like uh, like uh, Lauren uh, Gropert and uh, as I like to call her and, and some of these other clowns, I'm sure they would hey, love for them to go hey, away. If, 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 if she if she keeps that campaign promise. <laughs> that you posted in the after show group. Yeah. She got my vote. <laughs> hey, Lori, Lori, 2024, <laughs> 2028, you got Eric Kilcher's backing. Let's go. You going to go all the way to Colorado just for that? Hey, I, I, Maybe. I, I, if, if that's how she, if that's what she's going to do for her supporters, I'll carry her to the White House. Maybe she'll I'll uh, piggyback her all. Maybe, maybe, maybe she'll take you to see Beetlejuice with her. I'm not a Beetlejuice fan, but she can pick the movie. Even. <laughs> sure, sure. I'm a gentleman. I'll uh, I'll pay. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Eric, we are uh, we are almost. I, I'll pay Lauren. <laughs> we, well, so there. Uh, from what the I've, offer has been made. From what I've Connerton Unleashed. From what I've uh, read about her uh, in a previous career. Uh, well, we won't go any further with that. That's for the that's for Matt Connerton Unsheathed. Uh, but what I was about to say, I thought I was keeping it very delicate here. What I, but I'm saying, but what I, well, what I was about to say about the previous career, though, uh, I, I wasn't making a joke that I, I have read that about her anyway. Uh, but uh, before I'm joking, I know, I know. <laughs> now, before we uh, before we uh, go, uh, Eric, we should remind people about uh, your film review, and of course, uh, you've got The Exorcist coming up and all that. So uh, I'll give the floor to you for that. Yes, this Friday we will you will have the review of the exorcist. Um, we're going to keep with the same formula we've been doing. We're going to have some clips from uh, interviews that have been done with the late William Friedkin, where he's talking about making of the exorcist and everything like that. Um, I mean, because the big thing is, is the clips that you would want to show. You really can't. Yeah. <laughs> on, 
any form of of uh, any form of broadcast media that's done for pu- that's done to the wide public <laughs> right. without right. majorly editing it. So, um, but no, uh, it's I, I'm really really excited for this review. It's a it's a big personal deal to me to be able to review this, Matt, and you know why. Yep. Um, it, I'm really excited, and I'm also excited to do the Exorcist Retrospective podcast as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you go to— uh, I'm very excited for that. Yeah, and uh, I would just uh, tell listeners, too, uh, right now, if you go to mattconnerton.com slash exorcist, uh, you can see the graphic uh, about that, and uh, that's going to be really cool. I'm looking forward to that. He- looking forward to hearing that. That is. I've been talking with the two guys who are going to join me. Uh, one of my best friends, Luke Kegbein, is going to join me, and Brandon Bush, a guy that loves film, loves cinema, loves horror. Uh, and tomorrow night we're seeing Exorcist Believer, and that will include our thoughts on that film as well. Oh, um, you're- ju- Yes, so the tickets were actually bought today. Uh, it's going to be. I'm a, I'm excited to see it. Usually sequels, I'm indifferent, but I've seen the trailer multiple times, and I'm very excited for this. I really think it. We're finally going to get an Exorcist sequel that does the original justice. Oh, very cool. By the way, uh, I don't know if this is true, but I I just read online that the uh, the demon is. Uh is uh, uh, being played by Matt Gates. Yeah, I'm already petrified. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I'm already scared going into it. I might have to sleep with the lights on tomorrow night. That's right. <laughs> All right, Eric. Well, we got to we gotta wrap up, my friend, but uh, I always enjoy uh, getting to talk to my favorite conservative oh, as we do on Wednesdays. Yes, go ahead. I I enjoy it as well, Matt. It's great to have these discussions because my thought is it should provide a touch of hope that, you know, independents, conservatives, moderates, that as long as we have an open mind, we can have these discussions about about things our country could do to be better. Yeah. No, absolutely. That's a big part of why I do this show. I love, you know, open and, uh, Uh, you know, open dialogue. So absolutely. Absolutely. My friend. All right, Eric, we will, uh, we will let you go. Uh, Be careful uh, in all that wind. And uh, I look forward to Friday's review. Yes. I look forward to delivering it. Thanks, Matt. (laughs) All right. Thanks, Eric. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right. Always nice to talk to uh, Eric Pilcher and we are out of time. So if you missed any part of today's show, it will be up in just a little bit at WMNHradio.org. And at my website, mattconnerton.com. And of course, mattconnerton.com slash exorcist. You can find out about that special podcast that uh, Eric is working on. Um, All right, we got to get out of here. That's going to do it for us for now. I will talk to y'all a little bit later. Bye, everybody.